Yes, life is good, as they say. So, uh, sorry, Steve Lee, you need to quiet down for a while. Welcome, everybody, to Tennessee, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from Middle Tennessee, the home of Alvin York, and all, of course, all sorts of cool people who don't have their tongue twisted up today, probably, right? Like I do. So, glad to see you, glad to see you out here in the woods with me. Uh, they keep getting more uh, beautiful every day, and uh, then they start going downhill, don't they? Uh, it gets more and more colorful, and then we know what happens. The leaves start falling off, which they already have started doing. Before you know it, it's old barren winter. Yeah, so you take the good with the bad. You get the change of the seasons in this part of the country. Unlike some areas that look pretty much the same year-round, like the desert, uh, out west, although it changes too, doesn't it, some, but not as much as uh, this area changes because we have more trees here, if you haven't noticed, big trees and they're uh, maples and oaks and hickories, poplars, and the leaves change color and fall off. The tree doesn't die, the leaves just fall off, don't they? So anyway, guess what I'm shooting? Good old, well you guess, you should know, some of you, you recognize this baby? You haven't seen it for a while, maybe. I haven't seen it for a while, or fired it for a while, yeah. It's the old Trail Boss 44 Magnum in three inch barrel, <laughs> just what everybody wants. A 44 Magnum with uh, not much barrel. That way, there's no question whether or not you fired it, right? <laughs> because you can tell from the recoil if you're firing Magnum loads. So yes, uh, as uh, Steve Lee said, the uh, what did he say in the song, that the zombies are the only thing that's real? I don't know, something like that. Uh, a little more about that. So uh, it is Halloween, and we do have a zombie on the on the range today, you notice. He's uh, got scared out of his skin, old Mr. Bones did. He's uh, had a, a good week. You might have seen him you know, riding in my four-wheeler, trying to steal my tractor, sitting on the tractor with his AK-47. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram, the real Hickok 45, uh, you saw old Mr. Bones uh, on my tractor, guarding the tractor, guarding the place, and now he's out here. So we'll try not to shoot him today, okay? And uh, it's really not safe standing on the range, uh, unless maybe you already don't have any blood. Yeah, maybe it doesn't make a lot of difference. So we'll see. <laughs> what am I going to talk about? So. I know these times are coming. They always do. They always do. I almost have whiplash from ammo shortages, gun shortages, firearm shortages, run on runs on firearms, runs on ammo. Uh, yeah, I, I really do almost have whiplash. It's just it, it almost has gotten boring. It happens. Every it's just uh, very predictable. Every three four years, it's just is going to happen because of elections or some incident, uh, yeah, it, it just happens periodically. And that's why I always advocate uh, doing the old dollar cost averaging thing and uh, just picking up a little ammo whenever you're in a gun shop, you're around, order a little bit now and then, or however you get your ammo, and just, uh, you don't have to go crazy, just pick up a little bit here and there, and you'll have plenty of ammo, you know, just so, uh, Anyway, uh, enough on that. What am I going to talk about? Uh, let me thank also Ballastol, uh, the magical juice, and then Talon Grips, TalonGunGrips.com. Probably have some in my pocket. Uh, look at that on the old sig. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I uh, uh, what was I going to? Well, yeah. Speaking of zombies, I'll, I'll give you a little preview. The uh, uh, many of you probably don't even know about it. Uh, there are so many new people every day. That, uh, that John and I had a small part in a, a zombie movie. I 
I think it's been three or four years since we did the filming, you know, really has. And, uh, uh, and, uh, Oh, what was I saying? Everybody's trying to call me right now. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's, maybe it was four years. And uh, we we uh, were approached, this is like an independent first time uh, making a movie for these producers and everything, but they uh, approached me and wanted to know if I'd you know, be in it. It was a really small part and uh, it was like one line or no line just kind of turned to me and show my face after I shot a zombie or something. And, and, uh, and I, I thought that'd be kind of cool, you know, like, why not? Yeah, kind of a why not, you know, thought y'all might get a kick out of it. And uh, so we, we uh, were in contact, yeah, I'll well, probably do it, checked it out. And anyway, it's been a long process, I guess like all movies are, especially if it's somebody's first movie and going through that sort of thing. And it ended up a little bit more than just uh, looking at my pretty face, it was, uh, a few, I don't know how many lines I ended up with, like, I don't know, what's a line? Uh, you know, like six or eight lines or something, I don't know, you know, two or three little scene type, you know, uh, pieces. And uh, so uh, anyway, we did that. John had a small part as a zombie and, uh, and all that. So it was kind of fun and interesting doing it. We'll talk more about it, but it is coming uh, soon, finally. It, it looks real, okay, this time it, it, it will be out, maybe this week. So we, uh, they sent us a couple of clips, the little, little baby clips, and uh, we might, I don't know, might include one in here. So if you see it at the end, that's what it is, okay, <laughs> or, or somewhere. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, it, uh, it's, it's coming out, I think, uh, probably this week, and will be available for streaming, that kind of thing. And so we're going to, you know, we'll help them promote the thing. We put a lot into it. Uh, even though it's a small part, it's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch is in it. Uh, he and uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, see, do I have that written down anywhere? Some notes for this thing. Uh, yeah, Alex Zedra, you know, of Instagram and internet and the game world, uh, you know, fame uh, is his girlfriend in it. And, uh, you know, Matt's my nephew in there. And there, there's a couple other people I think are involved in YouTube. I forget their name, but anyway, uh, there's some people you will recognize in there. Okay, you might recognize some of the zombies if you hang out in some rough neighborhoods, right? Uh, so <laughs> if you've been hanging out in Seattle or some of the cities around the, the country, Portland, you know, this uh, fall, you might recognize a lot of those faces. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of that. So. Anyway, I'll, I'll keep you posted on it. I might stick a little piece in there. Uh, remember, I'm not a professional actor. Like, I have to tell you that, right? I have to remind you of that. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just a goofball on YouTube. But it was fun, and uh, so okay, keep your eye open. We're gonna do, we'll do, once it's available, we'll probably post a little video to let you know that it is. How's that? All right. So again, I've got my Smith & Wesson Trail Boss. And I have to look and see which videos we've done with this. It's a three inch 629 and this, see this is a dash. Wow, I just can't see it. Dash five. Yeah, dash six. Well, it's not my eyes, it's just the, wow. I don't remember that being so hard to see. Five, yeah. It's uh, almost stenciled on there a little bit differently. Five or six, wow! This is uh, well, I can show it to you. It's hard to hard to see. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but it's a five or a six. It does not have the key lock, you notice, okay? But it is more of a, a modern, uh, you know, six twenty nine with a different cylinder latch there, and uh, it has the frame mounted firing pin, you know, that's as opposed to the hammer mounted firing pin. For those who don't know. All the early Smiths, you know, had the hammer-mounted firing pin, so it's it's uh, it's it's great that it was. Even though it's more modern, what would you say? Probably uh, I've got the dates on all the uh, '90s or something. Uh, it's modern, but it it uh, is pre-key lock. That's that's worth a lot to me. So great little firearm and uh, feels good. As uh, I have said before, what's my line on these little three-inch 44 magnums? 
Come on now, how do I regard these? Some of you are answering it. You actually have, you're so sick, you've seen so many of our videos, you know what I'm thinking, don't you? I regard these pretty much as a 44 Special with Magnum capability, right? And that's kind of my line on these. <laughs> Shoot mostly specials in them, but it's nice to have that capability. Kind of like a little pocket 357, you know, Model 60 or something that you could put some hot, pretty hot 357 Magnums in it, but do you want to shoot it if you do? <laughs> or like some of these, uh, uh, what are they, like the 360 PD? I, I, I really, we need to get some of those and do those, those really lightweight scandium, airweight, scandium, whatever they're made of. I think they're lighter than even the airweight uh, Smith & Wessons. And they're, they come in like, 357 Magnum, there's a 44 Magnum, I think. And I, they're kind of this size of gun, but weighs nothing. Weighs about about as much as this, this glove, you know, I was using my paint. So, uh, wouldn't want to fire a lot of those. I don't even like firing Magnums in this. I'll probably do it here just to show I'm not a baby, okay? In fact, I'll go ahead and fire a couple. I don't want you to go any longer thinking I might be a baby, okay? federal magnums for those. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's good to have that capability, especially if you were in bear country where you're less interested in target shooting unless just around camp uh, you decide to do some target practice or shooting. But then when you hit the trail or you go fishing the next day, whatever you're doing, you might want to put some of these in there. Some sort of magnum. Why did I put six in there? I don't need to have six rounds to show you. I'm not a wimp, do I? Well, maybe. Oh boy. Why did I do that? All right, let's try it. Let's shoot the target. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna hit this two later. I don't know if you can see it. I think you can. Knock the cowboy around like that. Uh, how about that plate? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna whiz one right by Mr. Bones' shoulder. Hit that plate. Oh man, that just barely missed his, his shoulder. Uh, which reminds me of something. You know, I uh, there's videos back through the years. Boy, it's noisy out here today, you know, cars and chainsaws and all that. Pretty fall day. Uh, sound carries uh, faster, uh, more easily, I guess. But anyway, uh, I, we have a video where back when I had a golden retriever, he's like back up the hill or something from me. And I don't know if I was like, going to turn around and shoot or what I was doing or, or viewers think that I'm going to turn around and shoot. I'm not sure what, I, what that video is about now, but and I think in one video on the main range, maybe a, a, the, one of the dogs was out there prowling around, he ran across the range as I'm facing the camera talking or something. Well, that can look really dangerous. I mean, for the dog, not for me, right? Or you. It can look really dangerous. It could even look irresponsible. Um, the thing is, you're shooting, what's one of the rules of shooting? Always know your target and what's behind it where the bullet's going, what you're shooting at. And generally speaking, I mean, if you're just so horrible with a, with a firearm, you just started, you're, you shouldn't be shooting a 44 Magnum for one thing to begin with, or anything really powerful to begin uh, as a beginner. Uh, so whatever you're shooting, you should be able to handle it fairly well. Maybe you're, you're not the best shot yet, but you're not gonna be, uh, let me put some uh, specials in here you're not going to be just throwing uh, bullets all over the place, right? You take a sight picture on what you're gonna shoot and you can see with your peripheral vision if something moves into that vision. You're, I mean, you're, you're focused on, on that and everything. Uh, and it's not like, oh, I pull the trigger and before the bullet gets there, a dog runs in front of, hey, the bullet's too fast for that. As soon as you pull the trigger, the bullet is there basically. So. So they, those sorts of things are just not uh, as 
dangerous as they might appear. I can shoot through here. I'm going to shoot the bowling pin on the other side of him. I'm going to get to where I don't even have much uh, room at all. And I might hit him in the arm if I flinch, but I don't plan to do that. Okay. So I was like that far away from him. And if, whether he was there or not, I, I wasn't going to put the bullet where he is, Mr. Bones. Okay. Is it Mr.? I guess it is. Uh, you know, I shoot these plates. I'll shoot that one behind him back there. Run to the rock. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to shoot Mr. Bones. Now, I don't want to be standing there while you're shooting or even Rob Latham is shooting. Uh, but I probably would be okay. You know, the muzzle blast would be the biggest danger. A piece of fleck of uh, powder in my eye or something, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not advocating, don't ever do that. That'd be stupid, right? Uh, but so anyway, you're, you're taking a sight picture on what you're shooting. Even across the hill over there, as I'm looking down the sights at something, I can see if something moves into the, to the area, for one thing. And again, the bullet's going to get there so fast. Now, the biggest danger with something like that would be, you know, admittedly, if there were a dog, that's why you, you should, you'd see it, you know, if there's an animal over there. Or a human, of course, but uh, they wouldn't be that dumb. Uh, is maybe bullets splatter off of a steel target, you know, you know, could you know, get a piece of that in somebody's eye or something like that. If they're standing, you know, even like, I don't know, 15 feet uh, to the right or something, you know, that, that sort of thing could happen, right? Or an animal catch a little bullet splatter. So, but anyway, it just came to mind. Uh, I think uh, people who don't shoot have this idea that, okay, if I'm shooting on this range right now, everything in those woods and on the other side of those trees and to the left by 100 yards is in danger. <laughs> it's in danger. Not really. I mean, think about it. Uh, any of these targets on this hill right here, uh, not the one over there, but this hill right here, uh, if I'm shooting most of the handguns I shoot, now this one's a little more of a challenge, but still, because it's short barrel, short sight radius, I mean, I shouldn't be missing more than like that. You know, I should be able to shoot a group about like that on any of these targets. And on these closer ones, uh, that I was shooting you know, around Mr. Bones there, you know, I, I should be able to put the bullets on top of each other if I'm really focusing almost. So, uh, not as dangerous as it appears, okay? So, uh, let me, uh, as I'm talking to you, I'll tell you what, let's see, no, I could do that, and let's see. Uh, I'll stop it and start again, how's that? Okay, folks, I am still with you, yes. Uh, hey, that was just a split second, really, right? In, in, in uh, your perception, <laughs> but I had a little phone call. John's trying to call me, and <clears throat> the movie producer, the zombie movie, uh, Strain 100, and uh, some different things. And I, I just, you ever get that feeling when you get a phone call? Because I don't answer a lot of phone calls. But I'm not uh, driven by my phone. I'm not intimidated with, a, never have been with a, by a phone ringing. Uh, I always figure out, well, even before answering machines existed, I, you know, if, if I was busy or doing something, I'd let it ring. You know? and, and pretty much family knew that there's an emergency, hang up and then call again. It's kind of a universal, I guess, method. Just keep calling and, okay, uh, maybe it's something serious. It's somebody, uh, you know, with answering machines, of course, it, that solves a lot of that issue. If it's important, they'll leave a message. You know, if somebody I want to talk to or I'll call back, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, if I recognize the number, if I recognize the name, I'll answer it, you know, that, that sort of thing. But uh, so I knew the name, who was calling. And I was afraid it, uh, it it could be something that maybe I'd want to mention. And it, I'm glad I answered because I'll go ahead and let you know that uh, on this zombie movie, uh, Strain 100, that uh, it's uh, coming soon, to put it that way, probably within probably within a week, probably. Yeah, of course, we've heard that before, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, but the website that uh, you can go ahead and go to, that's one thing I got clarification on, it's uh, www.strain, uh, S-T-R-A-I-N, 100, the numbers, 100, okay? Strain100movie.com.
pretty easy. That's the name of the movie, Strain 100. So it's strain100movie.com. And uh, you can go to it now, okay? You don't have to wait till it's out. That's what I wasn't sure about. Uh, that was one we were gonna let, make you aware of once the movie was out. But you can go there now and get updates. And I, I don't know if you, I don't know how you get the updates, but you can go there and you can get updates in terms of when it's, it's out and that sort of thing, okay? So there, I got this so you know the website of this uh, this big zombie movie, okay? Uh, so anyway, that's coming within a week probably, all right? So. Uh, Hope you'll check it out. It's not because John and I are fabulous actors, or Matt, well, Matt might be, I don't know, or Alex Zedra, they might be incredible actors. Hollywood might be calling people, you know, that you wouldn't have expected and offering big parts, you know, as a result of uh, little parts like this in a, in a, in a first time movie, <laughs> who knows? Don't think they'll be calling me, you never know though. This might be the end of my, my, uh, my shooting career. I might just, uh, be living in Hollywood, you know, hanging out on the beach from now on. So anyway, uh, check it out uh, and uh, appreciate it. Like I say, we have a little bit of a, a piece of it. So yeah, we're going to promote it and we hope you'll you'll stream it. I don't know what it'll cost, but hope you'll stream it and, and watch it and just be amazed, right? So uh, what else uh, about that? We'll keep you posted on that. And like I say, once that is out, we'll post a uh, video on that. And, and I will, I'll probably post include a couple of little clips in it okay uh <laughs> might be like a lot of trailers might be the best part of the well it won't be the best part because i'm in both of them i guess uh so what else do i got to talk about now i'm gonna have to get out of here but i want to take a couple more shots i was probably in the middle of explaining something too about shooting and about uh safety on the range uh i, I guess i got my points across on that you want to be really careful but then again, people who don't have experience shooting, uh, sometimes they they don't know what's safe and what's not, which brings up a whole nother subject, doesn't it? Gun safety. The anti-gunners have tried to co-opt that term safety, gun safety, firearm safety, <laughs> which is bizarre. We're living in an upside down world, right? But, you know, they uh, there's even a new firearms organization what i heard there was a tom gresham i think talking about it uh something about gun safety organization i don't know what it's called but it's not about gun safety it's really about gun control and that's that's what the gun controllers have done they have taken that term weren't you interested in gun safety of course every shooter's interested in gun safety it's the primary concern we're not concerned with how you interpret gun safety because we know how you you anti-gunners uh, define gun safety your real definition and ultimate goal and definition of gun safety is it will be safe when there are no guns right or there are no black guns or there are no uh, semi-automatic firearms in this you know start with that and there are no firearms that have capacity of more than 10 and once they get to that there's a capacity no capacity more than five or six and then down to all you need is one shot you know so you know there's no end to that so uh, that's what they mean by gun safety no bullets no guns right and i happen to have one here that has bullets and i'm going to shoot it since i do oh man well let's, let's try to hit the gong uh, i'm not sure where to hold I guess right there. <laughs> nice. Let's get a hog. Click. No, let's don't say we did. <laughs> All right. Good old 44 special Magnum. It's hard to beat. Uh, so, you see all the stupid videos we put up this week, by the way. Clint Eastwood tribute. As usual, I made a couple of mistakes. I think one of my quotes was from uh, the wrong movie. I was thinking it was from Good, Bad, and the Ugly. It was from Fistful of Dollars. So I do that on purpose, really, because I uh, I would hate for you to think I'm perfect. Now, I'd hate for you to think I know what I'm doing. Because if I act like I know what I'm doing, uh, guess what would happen? You would grow to expect it. 
I don't want those sorts of expectations. So if I haven't said something pretty stupid for uh, a few hours, I make up something. You know, I don't want people expecting me to be uh, perfect or even close to it. So I don't want people expecting me to be of sound mind, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was fun to do. And uh, um, I, uh, I know, it, as you saw in the video, it, it, uh, as fate would have it, you know, the weird things that happen, like with the, the snake gun and the ejector rod, and I knew that, and I stuck it in wrong. And uh, you would think, sometimes I see a video like that, wow, uh, people probably think that uh, anytime I'm on the range, I'm having, you know, screw-ups like that over and over and over. But really, uh, no. <laughs> it waits for the camera to start rolling. And maybe it's because, you know, when you're getting ready for a video, because we sort of get ready for a video, we have to kind of think about it a little bit and get the gun. Maybe, oh, where's this gun print? Let's shoot that. Because we don't do things in segments. And so we're going for the whole 20 or 30 or 40 minutes without a break. So we want to sort of make sure. So we're thinking about other things. I'm thinking about every other things. You know, what I want to say about that gun? And you know, I know it works. And uh, or may, whereas I should be testing it maybe more double checking triple checking the little things like that more sometimes but uh and then also if you have a video it's made up of i don't know, I don't know 30 segments how hard is it to redo just reshoot that that 30 second segment you know whereas we know we're going to do a whole new video just because i say something dumb or make a mistake or something but that was fun to do and uh just uh, as usual, a lot of people want to know, well, where's this gun? Where's that gun? Well, same place all the other 50 guns are that uh, Clint Eastwood has used in movies. We couldn't do them all. How long was the video? I don't know. We're probably close to 30 minutes, you know, so uh, with just talking about six of his, I guess it was six, wasn't it? So fun to do, and that was the main point to, to just uh, make a tribute, not a eulogy. I know he's not dead. It was just a tribute. You can have a tribute to somebody, okay, while they're alive. Uh, so that was kind of fun. Uh, one thing about those movies, you know, when you, boy, so many of you, I saw comments, people who's loving those movies and naming them and knowing more about some of them than I do and, uh, and liking them as much as I do and everything. Like one, one thing I noticed recently those old movies, they always have had that appeal, right? Just like old music or classic rock for me, classic country even, uh, uh, have been special music and movies. And you know, lately, here you know, I sound like an old guy, but you know, I think, for example, during uh, on music, who'd have thunk it in the 60s and the 70s when I was listening to all those bands, whether it was the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or Bob Dylan and all my favorite uh, folks, Led Zeppelin, uh, Joe Walsh. I mean, who'd have thunk it is that was going on because things had changed, you know, different types of music went from Elvis kind of to that, different kinds of rock and roll, and the next step would be this and that, and, and it would be big. Elvis was gigantic, you know, and different types of music, they're all gigantic. and. So I don't know, I guess we all just kind of thought the, the natural uh, course of events would be that by the end of the 70s, you know, rock and who cares about rock and roll as much? There's gonna be something else just as big and bigger and it'll replace it and only the old folks will care about that old stuff, you know, and it'll be something else then after that and just the natural course of, of events. So who'd have thunk that while that was going on and we were in the middle of it and playing it on our AM radio in the car and buying the albums, that that would be the best music ever made. No sort of a judgment, right? <laughs> Maybe the best rock music ever made. Uh, you know, I mean, wow, because that's what I, I listen to. And a lot of people do, even young people listen to. They find the classic rock station or they buy that music, you know, so often. I mean, who does rock better than Led Zeppelin, for example, if you want that kind of harder rock, you know? Who does folk ballads or uh, that kind of folk rock better than Bob Dylan, or Joan Baez, or John Prine, or, or those people? I mean, who does it? Is anybody even close? Is anybody even in the same ballpark, the same state, the same universe? 
now. I mean, there's good stuff out there, I realize, somewhere, but somewhere. But uh, so it, it's, it's kind of interesting, you know. Uh, that's, that's been an interesting aspect uh, growing, growing old, growing up, is you just, what's the next best thing? You know, it's gonna be something, but it really didn't appear, really. Now you would disagree, some of you, that like some modern music and different types of music that I probably haven't heard yet. So uh, anyway, but with movies, uh, things have changed uh, culturally to the point where it's, it's kind of refreshing to see a movie. Well, like in Clint Eastwood, of course, you got him in Dirty Harry and taking care of business and doing things that nobody could do today. We wouldn't want a cop doing that or a detective acting. Well, even then, we you don't want a detective taking law kind of into his own hands, but that's what movies do. They dramatize things, I have to tell you that. Um, but uh, still, so many things so politically correct uh, today that, that those movies would never make it, right? You wouldn't, they would not be. They'd be so watered down in so many ways. Uh, and it's, it's just interesting to me, I talked with John about this, how in a movie, like, like a claim, any movie, you know, it was made before 1990 or something, where, you know, like say it's a cop or anybody, they're, they're at a restaurant or a bar or something, and the phone rings and it's for, it's for uh, like Clint Eastwood or something, you know, the, the station has called, because <laughs> you know, they, they, they know he's there, you know. You have to let people know where you are because there's no cell phone, there's no pocket phones, you know. And so the, the days, because uh, I lived through those days, so maybe that's why it's a little more interesting. Uh, and, and, you know, the actors, there's nothing odd about them not, well, or there is something odd about them not being on their, their phone, checking their texts and notifications and all, oh, who answered, oh, who liked this, or all that stupid, you know, stuff all day. You know, they actually have a life and they're doing it. And a phone call is just an unusual thing that comes out of the, the blue, sort of. And it's just a minor thing. It may be on the phone, depending on what you do, but just a, a couple of phone calls a day. That's, that's, yeah, that's pretty interesting too. When I think back in the 70s, I might have gone several days and not even picked up a telephone. Yeah, so yeah, not talked to anybody on a telephone. Yeah, so uh, it, it's, it's so different, but it's neat in the movies because that's the life that everybody's living. If it's set, if it was made in the 70s or 80s and if it's set in that time period, it's just, it's a little, ref something refreshing about it People are not sitting around texting each other and always on their phone getting calls and stuff, you know, constantly. They're going about their business and, and doing things. It's a, but it's, and for a lot of reasons, it's, it's neat to, to see those old movies. Uh, and we love, and yeah, one aspect of course is people don't really uh, consciously, intellectually want to be John Wayne or Clint Eastwood and do exactly the things they are doing. It's just that uh, there's a side to all of us. You know, we, we get frustrated with, with life or, you know, we get frustrated on a given day. And, uh, and those, those actors kind of do things for us, maybe. They, they uh, maybe like we do, you, if you can't shoot, you live in an apartment in New York City or something, you've never even seen a gun and you enjoy seeing a 44 Magnum fired, maybe a real one, you know. But, but uh, those actors, they sort of live out that fantasy life that all of us would, would like to do sometimes, whether it's uh, say something really mean to a surly waiter, you know, or server. I don't know that, that we maybe would be more reluctant to do. So I think most of us have that pretty good perspective. Even watching those big shoot 'em ups, 99.9% .9 of us out here, uh, guys even, we don't want to ever shoot anybody, you know. But still, some of the scenes and the things that happen in, in, in westerns or uh, police movies or army movies, whatever it might be, it's, it's entertainment, and we sort of vicariously live those lives and you experience things. That hey, nobody knew that. Good thing you're telling us about that, Hickok 45, that that's why we like fiction. We sort of vicariously live and experience that fiction, right? So nobody knew that. Good thing I pointed that out. Oh, I know one thing. With the pumpkin kill, yeah, you uh, you saw. Uh, I'm sorry that we had to kill those pumpkins, uh, but uh, I, they probably didn't deserve it. But uh, it's just their fate. 
it's just their fate. You still know what's going to happen in this world when you're born into it. Uh, I could have been struck by lightning when I was 10, you know. People die of heart attacks when they're 20. They get cancer when they're 15. And when they're three, you know, there's a lot of sad stories. Things just happen. Uh, the randomness of the universe is, uh, is, is pretty uh, crazy, isn't it? And uh, so, so every year there's uh, 10 or 15 pumpkins. They, unbeknownst to them, when they start sprouting, you know, they have no clue that their life is going to end yep. abruptly one day through no fault of their own. Uh, and I, I can appreciate that, but still it's just pretty much part of the randomness of it all, of the universe. And so, you know, about 15 pumpkins, uh, that's just their fate. Uh, is there any reward for them? Is there any benefit? Not really other than at least maybe they die with the knowledge that uh, a lot of people are going to get some satisfaction out of it, I guess, you know. So, and the other thing about that, it always brings out a couple more uh, food Nazis or people who don't have a lot of understanding about food distribution around the world, uh, economics, uh, how the world works, common sense. They're just emotionally driven when they see something that is edible for my relatives in kentucky that means eatable if it's edible and you're not eating it uh that's a horrible sin of some sort right so uh you get you get some of those folks out i'm a little too sarcastic with them i realize i shouldn't do that but you know in some of the videos or watermelon videos or whatever i've uh, posted that i am offering a free scholarship uh to the community college of your choice to take economics 101 you know if you are the first one to uh, complain about destroying food <laughs> and that sort of thing. And, and, uh, and I make jokes about how so many people in uh, developing countries are suffering from uh, watermelon uh, deficiency syndrome, you know, and that uh, they're not getting that watermelon nu nutrition that they could be getting because we are destroying uh, a few watermelons each year or pumpkins, you know, so they're dying of either pumpkin or watermelon. One of those two melons, the uh, uh, the nutrition that is in those because it, it would save a lot of lives. And there's on so many levels, uh, the silliness of that when you think about it. Uh, I mean, on so many levels. Uh, now again, I'm justifying what, what, what I do, what we do for, for you all <laughs> in videos occasionally. They're right, and uh, and the 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 thing is, my common sense just jumps out at me. And, okay, if I now you correct me if you don't don't agree. I mean, or, uh, I might not take the correction, but I mean, you you <laughs> welcome to disagree. But how do, if I grow a patch of pumpkins here, or I go buy them from a, a local farmer or the grocery, some pumpkins. Uh, there's no shortage of pumpkins. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Uh, I'm not buying them out uh, from somebody else who is desperate to get them. There are people starving and lying at the grocery or the pumpkin patch, and I went in there and bought the last 10, so they're going to starve tonight, you know, right here in this county. I mean, there's nothing going on like that. There's no shortage. After I come home with my pumpkins or my watermelons, there's still piles of them at the grocery. There's piles of them at the watermelon, the pumpkin patch. They're everywhere. Uh, so I just don't see how my buying those melons and bringing them home and doing what I want to do with them, either eating them or sitting on them, letting them sit outside and rot, feeding them to the raccoons, which they get a lot of it actually, uh, or the cats, uh, hanging them in trees, letting the birds eat them. Whatever I do with them, I'm sorry, I don't see anybody starving because of that. I don't see anybody even missing out on any nutrition or food, same thing, because of that. I guess I'm just dense. I guess I'm not very bright. You know, if that's actually happening, if somebody's life is is in risk, at risk or in danger because I'm buying a few watermelons or pumpkins out of a huge bin, 
Uh, yeah, I didn't know I was killing anybody, you know. Now, on the other hand, if I were driving along behind a truck and it was full of watermelons and those were headed to save some people's lives that were starving, okay? And I grabbed a bunch of them off that truck. That might be different, I guess. So I don't think that happens very often. Uh, uh, you know, a truckload of watermelons or pumpkins going somewhere like that, you know, to some foreign country where people are starving. Melons, I know, I realize that, that uh, most people's lives are saved who are starving by pumpkins and watermelons, right? But there's plenty of them. You know, so anyway, enough on that. It's, it always strikes me as funny. I, where I, I, one place I taught, I would never mention names and, or anything to make fun of. People have their own, their own opinions. They're entitled to them. But I'm also entitled to think things are a little stupid too uh, because I'm kind of stupid. So I see stupid things. Uh, it helps to be kind of dense because you can recognize density elsewhere when you see it, right? Uh, uh, I've, I was involved in a school educational setting at some point, let's just say that. And the kids had, uh, in art class, had, uh, had a history of doing things with like macaroni, you know, gluing it together, making figures and people or whatever they're doing, art, artistic things, you know, artwork and gluing it onto a canvas, I guess, and shapes and, you know, think about all you could do with, uh, you know, the hard macaroni you buy at the grocery to cook. Whatever. Uh, and there's different shapes of it and all that, and painting it, and all that kind of thing, some you know, cool stuff like that. And, uh, and uh, they were doing an art, some art projects with that you know, one year in the fall, I guess. And, and some, I don't know, a parent complained. And, uh, and of course the person in charge of the school and everything, you know, said, oh yeah, I'll look into that. Yeah, the parent didn't think that they should be, uh, the people were starving. And there, there are people starving, and they're, you know, doing artwork with food or whatever, you know, however they phrase it. And so they put a stop to that. The headmaster, the dean, or the principal, whoever I won't say, put a sudden stop to that. Boy, can't have that. People were dying, no doubt, because those middle schoolers or tenth graders, whatever, were using little pieces of hard macaroni, you know, and, and making shapes and, and painting it, you know after they had gone to the uh, grocery and paid for it and bought it and brought it back there, leaving tons and tons of it at the grocery that anybody else could go buy and donate or eat or do whatever they wanted to do with it, okay? Now, I didn't lose any sleep over it at the time, but it just came to my mind. Uh, and, uh, you know, how, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was one that I like, I kind of like the person that made that decision, you know, so, I, you know, I, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a rabble rouser or anything, but I, I remember at the time thinking, eh, that's kind of goofy, but yeah, you're the boss, do what you want. Yeah, just, yeah. so anyway, uh, so that's kind of my take on it. You might have a different take. You probably do, because you're probably a lot smarter than I am. But I've been talking a lot today, so my throat's a lot drier than yours. <laughs> I've gone too long, isn't it? Okay, anything else I have to talk about? Not really. Uh, it's a beautiful time of year, and uh, we're just enjoying being outside and doing some videos. And like today, there's nothing I'd rather do. Be, I could do this for four hours right now, just shoot and talk to you all. Uh, the fall is my favorite time of year. And as I was out one day the, this past week, and I uh, <clears throat> had a cigar. I was sighting in a gun. And it looked just like this, and the beautiful, and the leaves were falling, a little bit of breeze, and, and I, I remember thinking at the time, yeah, it, it doesn't get any better than this. Here I am with a favorite firearm. Fall is my favorite time of year. Trees are beautiful. Trees are, leaves are falling. You know, a good cigar, and I'm able to appreciate it. I'm alive, my heart's beating. My brain may not be functioning fully, but I'm, I'm, I'm alive and uh, yeah, at it, it, the most beautiful, most comfortable time of the year in Tennessee, I think. And you know, just life really is good. You know, it is good for most of us, you know, most of the time. And we need to appreciate that, right? And the best way is to take a couple more shots, right? Let me load up a couple. You won't get mad at me if I shoot, will you? And then I'll probably let you go. Like I said, I will, uh, uh, 
I'll, I'll patch in a, 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 the segments of the video that, uh, that they sent along. And uh, <laughs> don't laugh at me. Do not make fun of me now, please. I am not an actor. Just don't make fun of me. All right. Ah, smell the gunpowder blowing right back into my face. Probably killing me, right? Well, if uh, if gunpowder, or even breathing gunpowder, is killing me, it's uh, it's been killing me for a long time, like since before I was 20 years old. So it's 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 a it's a slow killing. Put it that way. <laughs> it's very 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 slow. It's taking its time. And I appreciate it doing that, taking his time because I, I enjoy hanging around and uh, and shooting. I really do. So I'm gonna let you go. And again, don't forget uh, that the movie's coming soon. Y'all been asking about it, you know, over and over. And I understand. And we're, I guess, I don't know why I was so dumb and naive. I know that movies take a long time. Uh, uh, you know, even even high. Uh, blockbuster productions you know I, you, I recall seeing people interviewed actors talking about movies they were in and how uh, it may have brought up how well this movie that we're re releasing you know now the reason they're being interviewed you know we did it like two or three years ago and I've done three movies since then you know so it's and they almost forget about you know that one and so it just takes time and, and of course the this is the first time you know for the, these folks to, to make this movie and it's a it's a zombie movie yeah you know? so yeah you know, uh, uh, we'll all see it together and uh, uh, you know <laughs> for the first time and and uh, see how it goes I do know those were some scary zombies uh, even hanging around them it was it was pretty neat because uh, there were a lot of zombies on set like all day long they sit around having lunch there are some pretty scary looking people to be sitting around having lunch with. I mean, makeup was incredible. You know, you'll see, you know, in the movie, uh, just incredible. <laughs> I mean, you really, you really thought you were in The Walking Dead or something. They were pretty scary folks. So we'll keep you posted on that. And uh, like I said, you can go ahead and sign up at uh, strain100movie.com, uh, you know, for updates on it, as I understand. Okay. Don't take anything as a gospel that I say, because I, all I did, John and I, and Matt and uh, Alex Zedra and some others, was go up there and, and do our little part. Okay, so I uh, appreciate you all coming around and watching. We'll probably do some more videos, and you can pretty much count on that, can't you? Because it's what we do. It's what I do, right? It's what I do with my time. It's like why not? I like to shoot. I have a shooting range. I have a camera, so why not let you join me when I bring out fine firearms, okay? And I've uh, got several that I haven't done a video on yet uh, from Bud's, uh, wow, like three or four we'll be working on. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and as weather gets colder, that's more of a challenge, but we should have a couple more months of uh, pretty, pretty decent weather and uh, it'll be good. January, February, I don't know. There's a lot of days where I don't really like to get, I don't like to get out. I do this because I enjoy it. And so I, I just don't go out and do a video. So we some videos, uh, we do videos while the sun shines. Isn't there, a, isn't there an old saying about that? Make hay while the sun shines, something like that. So anyway, I'll shut up and, and let you go. And uh, uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll put a link that I was telling you about to the to the zombie movie you know, in the description. Okay, so y'all behave, and I hope you're enjoying the fall as much as possible. I hope life's getting back uh, to to semi normalcy for you. You know, at least you have some time during the week where it's semi normal. You know, if I lived in uh, Manhattan or some of these places that's essentially closed down almost, uh, you know, I. I don't know what you all do for those viewers that, I don't know, you're in downtown Chicago or New York or L.A. or wherever it might be that you don't even have a car or something. Somehow I would get out of the city to 
to a park somewhere, especially this fall. Uh, or the desert, you know, if you're in California, out, get out of the city uh, occasionally for a day or for a half a day and, and, and get out somewhere there's hardly anybody around and walk around. You don't have to worry about a, a stupid mask and, and just breathe and, you know, sit under a tree and read or whatever you, know, you do and, and uh, enjoy doing. Uh, and, and most of you do that, you can do that, uh, some sort of uh, escape, you know, from the closet. Uh, but there may be some some viewers there where you are kind of in another, another country. Uh, I, I understand the Internet's around the world, so a lot of you are watching from other, sorry to say planets, but countries. And, uh, you know, hopefully everybody can kind of get out and escape from, you know, the, the cabinet, you know, occasionally, you know, for your mental health, for your mental health. Because watching me doesn't do a lot for your mental health. Right. Remember what's that concept of osmosis? You know, uh, you know, you watch me very much. Your IQ just starts going do 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 do. All your mental health and everything. Right. So, anyway, appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll uh, probably see you next week. Life is good. Into the world when it comes right down to it. All a man needs a good cigar, a cup of coffee, and an arsenal. An arsenal of weapons is good. How many you got?